Hello, I'm Jordan, and today I've made something that doesn't suck. You're looking at a unstaged shot of my actual dining room table, and because I have a lot of crafty people in my family, it was often covered with projects. Necessity being the mother of an invention, I said, we need a new table. And not just any table, it's gotta be a table with two surfaces, one where you can work on normally, and then a vault underneath where you can put puzzles, games, etc., and then cover it back up and they won't be disturbed. A gaming table. As opposed to a lot of the very beautiful tables out there you'll find on the market, this is not a elegant dining table, although you can certainly eat at it. The appeal is more craft, game, art, kids, fun table. I mean, I actually think it looks very nice and professional, but I think the plywood aspect really lends an air of, hey, let's make something on this table. Uh, of course, it is packed with all the hidden features of any good game table, the vault, the rail accessories, uh, which are infinitely expandable. You can keep building whatever you want to attach to the side as your need arises. Very comfortably fits four, and you can totally fit six people at it as well. Another big factor of this table that a lot of other tables don't have is the leaves all store in the table. That is huge, especially if you're tight on space. And not only that, um, something that I pat myself on the back for is I made the leaves usable. Each leaf becomes its own little tray and you could design those however you wanted. I made two sort of ideal layouts. You flip the leaf around to use whichever way you want. It's got onboard power, charging, and controls for lights, boop, as well as your classic hidden switch to raise the table leaves. And something that I just think is really fun a customizable way to let everyone know where you're sitting with these magnetic tokens, I'm calling them. Very cool. A table like this was built with basic power tools. You definitely need a router to do it the way I did it. If you had a CNC machine, great, you're doing better than I am. That would have sped things up a lot. I don't, but using templates and a guide bushing, I was able to do whatever I needed to do. If you're not familiar with that, I walk you through it. It's actually really easy. So plans are available. Uh, check the link below. And if you're interested in how it was built or want help building along with the plans, then watch the video series. I'm gonna divide it into three videos and that should cover the whole thing. So this first video, we will do the basic build and the legs. So join me on this adventure of building the Superply, Superply. game table. Thanks for watching, here we go. All right, I might be putting out this video later, but I made this in November and December of 2021, that winter. So here's my shop, two car garage, getting ready to build, materials bought on the left. I got my power table saw ready. I got my assembly table in the back. We are relatively clean as it's gonna get. Let's change that. My method of work, uh, I don't bring a computer into there, so, um, I do everything in a free program called SketchUp. I print out every angle and measurement that I think I'll need and uh, really have that ready to go before I start. That's my reference as I build. Uh, I'm gonna get my material out and as I've done in other projects, when I have something really big to cut down like plywood, I will typically do it on the floor on uh, some sheets of foam with a track saw, much easier. Lay out your lines, and then break it down into reasonable sizes that you can then manage on my small table saw. Things are on wheels so that I can move it around and get it into position for a large sheet good, uh, including needing to put out um, an extension wing, which is also really helpful for large sheets. If you are in the need for a table like this, I have a full build series with free plans. Check it out if you'd like. I've been using it for years, still going strong. So uh, my plywood is now small enough that I can do it on my bench. And we will start this process with the sides, the four pieces that make up the sides of the table. Each one of them will have a slot in it to hold a leaf. So I'm gonna use a guide bushing with a spiral upcut bit. 
And whenever you do this, you have to measure the offset from the outer part of the bushing to your bit. And in this case, it was an eighth inch. So I'm looking at my plans and I'm going to adjust them one eighth inch in each direction. So I'm rewriting the new dimensions to make a template. And then a way to make a perfectly square template is to just use multiple pieces and glue them together, just using straight cuts on the table saw, as opposed to trying to cut into a piece and make a perfectly angled rectangle. That way it's uh, real straight. And then we're just gonna take some scraps to hold them flush against our workpiece on two sides. And the slots are in two different locations depending on the side of the table. So the long sides have it in one area, the short sides have it in another. That's why I had to make two different templates. And then you can see how I clamped it on using those scrap pieces to hold it tight against the edges and then route it out really quickly. And you'll see the hole is just a tiny bit smaller than the template, which is what we wanted. And there we go, nice and clean. I mean, needs a little sanding, but you know, it's all straight. Uh, I went ahead and squared up those edges. After the fact, I realized that's unnecessary. You don't need to, the round works perfectly well. And then there's a beautiful shot of a not beautiful chamfer bit but we're gonna run it on the inside of that new hole on both sides of it and along the bottom of each of those pieces. And there are our four sides. This is a plywood specific routing bit. These are very handy in this kind of situation as plywood is not typically actually three quarters or actually half inch. These are cheap bits. Uh, but all the same, they're gonna give me an even tighter fit than using a full three quarter bit. So uh, I always do a test piece first to make sure I'm getting my uh, dado where I want it and I got it. And so now I'm gonna run a dado along the inside of each one of these side pieces at the same height. And this is what the main table surface is gonna sit in, the bottom. And that may look like a mistake, but I swear to you, that was on purpose. Uh, the track goes, that dado goes just below that little piece there. That was actually how it should have gone. I swear, I swear. I tell you if I made a mistake. So I'm using some scraps to now set the bottom of the table on, and this is where it's gonna sit for a while. This is how we're gonna assemble the whole thing, because it's heavy. So that's the bottom piece cut to size, and then I went to put my sides on, and uh, I'm already realizing that I'm making mistakes. I'm rushing. I hadn't cut the sides down to their final length. That's okay, if that's the worst mistake we make, we're doing just fine, uh, but it wasn't. So I cut those down and I'm actually gonna use one of those off cuts as a spacer, which was helpful just to line up the long side, which we're gonna put on first. So I've pushed it in. And, uh, and then once I get it lined up, I can put glue in there along the whole dado, the groove, and then I'm gonna tack it in with a few brads. And we're gonna work our way around. So I did the long side first, then I'm gonna do that side, jump to the other side, and then we'll do the other long side to make sure it all lines up. I should mention the table is upside down. We are working on it upside down because there's a lot to do under it. Once those are in, I'm gonna clamp them to make sure they're square, and then we are going to reinforce with a couple screws on each corner. So the main bottom is held in to some grooves with glue, and the corners are screwed in. Uh, it should be all very strong. One of the amazing things about building entirely out of plywood is you don't really need to worry about wood movement very much. And that lets us get away with a lot of things that otherwise would not be possible with all hardwoods. I am putting in some more brads just to reinforce because I'm not gonna clamp around the sides. And now we're gonna cut down all the interior bracing, which kind of doubles as being structure, like a torsion box and also will make um, kind of like cubbies to hold the leaves. So I'm using a stop block to do accurate repeat cuts on the miter saw. And when I get to little pieces, eh, just use that old trick of drawing it right onto your miter saw. 
Look at that. Accurate enough. My kind of woodworking. <laughs> so some of the interior supports will have a cutout that matches the slot we put in the sides. This is all to hold the leaves in. So we're gonna start that with a jigsaw and finish on my very small bandsaw. These don't have to be perfect. You will not see these. These are purely functional. But just to speed it up, I'm going to work to make one very accurate and then use double-sided tape, clamp the others on, and uh, batch out four of them using a large pattern bit. And I'm just pushing in a little bit of the way and then pushing in further with each pass as opposed to trying to hog it all out at once. And once we're done, you pull it apart and rinse and repeat for the next one until we have some identical. And then we'll do a small chamfer on these as well on the inside and that'll just help the leaf not get snagged on an edge when we're pushing it in. Now I'm going to just lay them all in where they're supposed to go and see how close I got with the fit. And I nearly nailed it. Uh, some of them are just a bit too long, which is pushing that past the opening of the hole. That's supposed to be, you know, next to it in the other direction. Same there. Of course, it's better to be too long than too short because you can always trim it down. So I'm gonna take it over to uh, my sled and just shave off the exact same amount on each one. Bless you. Definitely better to sneak up on it than to cut too much off and have to start over. And now that they're all the right length, I'm going to put them back. I'm gonna make sure they're labeled so I don't forget what's what. And I'm also gonna go around with a crayon and mark everywhere that I'm gonna put a pocket hole. That's how I'm gonna attach all these to the underside, glue and pocket holes slash screws. So then I can pull each one out, get set up with a pocket hole jig, and take care of all of them at once and put them back without getting confused because they're all labeled properly, as in what side, where to put the hole, I get confused easily, this helps. And this is definitely a fast method to um, do all these and will be really strong. We'll be using standard inch and a quarter pocket screws and then using a square, I will go around and glue and screw in all of it until it is completely assembled. So it's sort of a torsion box, but it's also a way to store all the leaves. They slide in through each of those slots. It's upside down. It'll kind of make sense when you flip it over and see it. And now I'm going to uh, take a roundover bit and go over the interior of those outer boards so that when you are sitting and you move your legs up, you don't scratch them. I'm not going all the way to the corners. I'm leaving those square for the legs, which you will see why when we get to that part. So I've gone all the way around with a little bit of a round over, purely for comfort. And now we're gonna put in a couple spacers. And the reason for these is because of the length of the leaves on two of the sides, these will keep the leaves from going in too far. We'll do that to the opposite corner. While they dry, we can start working on the legs. Let's do it. So we're gonna need a bunch of the same size pieces. So to make it easier, I'm gonna gang some up together to put through the miter saw. So we just make sure they're even on one end, clamp them together. And then when we cut the other end, we should theoretically have a bunch of pieces that are all the same length. And we have varying widths that we need to do this for cut them down to different lengths. So we're gonna do that. And this guy can explain the plan better. Okay, legs. I'm excited about this idea. I think it's gonna be really cool and something a little different. So it's basically like a herringbone pattern, right? You take like this, you line up on the bottom, bottom being down by me, like this, Little of this, 
One of these, a couple two trios. And there we have it. And what this does is it makes a gap already made to fit the exact same width because we're using the same plywood. And that should slide right over the corner here, right? And give a nice snug fit. At least that's the idea. And then um, I think too, showing the sides with the ply is kind of part of the cool design feature. And I hope that will look uh, interesting. Let's see what happens. Blew it up. Well, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Uh, he can't frame a shot. That's a lot of forehead. But I do like the leg design. Let's see how he's going to pull it off. Glue everywhere, edges and interior. And uh, to be honest, this was kind of the thing that really got me inspired to do this table was I, I came up with this leg idea and then it kind of went from there. The table came out of the legs uh, and just showing off the plywood led to what if the whole table's plywood, how do we show more plywood, etc., etc. I am definitely a hobbyist and not a professional designer or artist or someone with taste or vision, but in this case, I'm real happy how it all turned out. It took me a bit, particularly in the first leg, to figure out the best way to go about clamping everything, when to use nails. Um, but once I did it, I kind of got a rhythm going and the others came together faster. At this point, it started snowing and the temp dropped below 37. So you will notice these semi fingerless gloves as a sad attempt to stay warm. But hey, look at that fit. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a deserved thumbs up. All right, four legs are built. And uh, I was all worried about lining them up on the bottom, but then was like, why don't I just trim the tiniest sliver off the bottom anyway to make sure it's lined up. But I do set up a stop block to make sure they're all the same length. Very important. You don't want one leg longer than another, for God's sakes. And we're gonna cut a couple squares to be used as feet. and we will cut out that little space right there so that it matches the L angle of the legs. Did that with a fence on the old bandsaw. Perfect square, so very simple. Mm-hmm. Being the feet, I want these on there uh, really well. So I'm making sure to put a lot of glue on, even though it's going into end grain and I'm gonna put a few brads in to hold it until I can properly clamp them. Uh, this is a bit of a spoiler. You're gonna see the reason why in a little bit, but I shouldn't have put those brads uh, so far out to the ends. You should kind of concentrate them more in the middle bottom of the leg, and you'll see why in a little bit. But there you go, all four legs totally glued up, and at this point, completely built. However, I wanna put a taper on them. So I'm gonna make a very quick down and dirty tapering jig. Uh, this is a really simple jig. I'm just using a scrap two by four. And this screw is what's gonna set the angle of your taper. So I'm putting that in and then I attach a bottom edge to it and that's gonna hold the work piece in. And then I'm gonna set, basically, you, you just measure how far you want the taper on one end and pull the screw out to that dimension, which in this case was about seven eighths. And then for a bottom, I cut some, just some hardboard and yeah, glued it and nailed it. Why? I should have screwed it. I should have screwed it, I wasn't thinking. You'll, you'll see the problem with that in a moment if you haven't already guessed. Uh, so anyway, uh, I am drawing the taper on the leg just to eyeball it, make sure I got it right. And I did this cut first on a test piece. I wasn't about to just send a leg through that I spent so much time on without first testing it, which worked the way it should. And this shot is actually double speed. So I was going very slow. I took my time and there were no problems. And then uh, check the, the angle. First time. All right, nobody likes a bragger, sheesh. Okay, so cut the taper on the other three legs. And then to do the taper on the other side, the blade won't go up high enough. So uh, yeah, gotta 
disassemble that jig to flip it over. Fortunately, it was super cold and the glue hadn't really stuck well, so I was able to use my manly strength to rip it apart and then put some more pins in. But obviously, uh, screwing that to the bottom would have been a smarter idea from the get-go. I don't care now because I'm going to rip it apart afterwards, or so I thought. Um, it's a fixed width now, so you just line up the fence on the other side and then cut the tapers on the opposite side. Guys, what? Um, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed in you. Why, what'd we do? Because I feel like you saw this coming and didn't say anything to me. Yeah, um, anyone could see this coming. I took the leg in to show off to uh, the amazing Mrs. Frank and said, what do you think of this? And she said, too chunky. And I said, no, what do you think of this? And she said, also too chunky. Hi um, more taper, more taper. And you know, mm -hmm. she's right, you were right. You knew it, you saw it. So we're gonna take this taper from here, I think even like, maybe like here. Yep, all the way. And bring it in a lot more. Oh man. Back to the jig, ripping those sides off again. Screws would have really been a much better idea. So you just back that screw out. Yeah, that's better. Now you can actually see the taper. Okay, here's something to point out. When we're putting the feet on, I did use some brad nails, and before I thought I was going out further, so now Make sure you cluster them in the middle because now I'm taking some dings right there. See it? I sheared through a nail. So luckily, uh, I'm replacing this blade soon anyway, but that'll mess up your blade. So uh, definitely when making these, center your nails in this part. Live and learn, mistakes are made. Speaking of which, some mistakes could have been avoided if I would have thought ahead and made an extra leg, a prototype. Why not have a prototype, right? When you're designing something and you don't know what's gonna happen, don't risk messing up your final pieces. That, another live and learn. But I got lucky and the legs all turned out the way they're supposed to with a little adjustment. So I'm putting a small chamfer all the way around them on every visible edge and the feet, which will protect the leg, protect me when I brush up against them and they look good. Oh man, that hits the spot. Okay, great place to stop. Uh, we have the table basically built and the legs, which are very cool, I think. Um, next video, we're gonna cover prepping the table for the electronics, uh, how to make and batch out a ton of these guys, what I'm calling the tokens. Uh, I'm number one. You can also be number one. This is not patented. Um, and how to do the armrests, which they're not difficult, but there's a number of steps involved. And it'll cover the second video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this one. If you like the music, check out my terrible band Quasar What What. We are willing to do anything to make you happy. Oh yeah. Um, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. That makes me happy. And uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.